Hello everyone, I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. In the headlines, seniors in Martinique provide housing assistance for their Dominican counterparts affected by Hurricane Maria. The impact of Hurricane Maria on hurricane shelters lingers as Dominica marks the start of a new hurricane season and the Minister for Culture renews government's commitment to the arts. We'll have details after this. Rudolph Thomas Enterprise in Portsmouth, your suppliers of building materials and hardware products. Over 20 years experience in the business. Rudolph Thomas has lumber and plywood, galvanized and fence pipe. Check out Rudolph Thomas for ceramic and vinyl floor and wall tiles, nails, nuts and bolts, paint and painting supplies. And check out their line of electrical and hand tools. Go now to Rudolph Thomas on 1240 Bay Street in Portsmouth. First stop in the news, the 2018 hurricane season officially began on June 1st and the prediction from the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, NOAA, can be cause for concern for Caribbean nationals. According to information from NOAA, there is a 35% chance of an above normal season, a 40% chance of a normal season and a 25% chance of a below normal season. NOAA is predicting a 70% likelihood of 10 to 16 named storms, 5 to 9 hurricanes, and 1 to 4 major hurricanes of category 3 and above. An average hurricane season produces 12 named storms, 6 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. Two of the main factors that contributed to the predictions are the possibility of a weak El Nino developing and near average sea surface temperatures across the tropical Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean Sea. Alexander implored Dominicans to use the lessons learned from Hurricane Maria to better prepare for the 2018 hurricane season. We have experienced firsthand the level of disruption that this system can inflict on our society, which has shown us how critical the need is to mitigate against the hazards posed by weather systems. Given the uncertainties involved with these systems at times, especially with intensity and rainfall amongst, the key message to the public is the need to always be prepared. Be advised that the threat from a rapidly intensifying system, such as in the case of Maria last year, will reduce preparedness time. Therefore, any warning message should prompt a protection response regardless of intensity forecast, as it only takes one system to disrupt our lives. The hurricane season runs from 1st June to the 30th of November. Chairperson of the Portsmouth Disaster Management Committee, Samuel Williams, is pitching the idea of investment in communication technology in the wake of the hurricane season. Idono John Baptist reports. Samuel Williams was elected to the post last month and he says his team is putting its house in order, including appointing subcommittees in preparation for the June to November hurricane season. Williams says on their end there are plans to boost capacity in operating ham radios. Thankfully, our disaster committee is blessed with folks with the knowledge of these things and we are thinking of doing a ham training for some of our members because we want to have them in strategic places throughout the town that we can communicate effectively and fluently. Satellite radio, um, satellite telephone is kind of expensive, but I, I think that is something that government has to look into. That is a thing that we must, 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 must. I, I cannot stress it enough. Another thing I've always said that, especially after disaster, always after disaster, communication is key because you cannot communicate with anybody. But if you have the means to do so, you can figure, okay, where we can allocate resources instead of walking on the ground and figuring, okay, we can send this there and send that there. You understand? So what we have to do right now is invest in communications technology and not only binding materials, but training folks. As an executive member of the Portsmouth Town Council, William says he has an excellent working relationship with the mayor and the parliamentary representative. These three bodies really constitute um, disaster management in the town of Portsmouth. And I must say that we have a very fruitful relationship. They have been very supportive, very helpful in giving us advice and, and where to go and what to do and who to go to and who to speak to as we get ready for the hurricane season. Mm -hmm. 
What sort of lessons would Hurricane Maria have um, taught you? I think we tend to depend too much on, on government slash um, disaster committees and all of that. At the end of the day, you are supposed to be responsible for, let's say, your yard. You ensure that your yard is clean. You ensure that your drain is clean. You, understand? you ensure that your neighbors are okay. You ensure that you follow your, the news bulletins. Because one of the things that we, I realize that we do not listen to the radio. You understand? We don't like to educate ourselves. And I think this is something that is critical. Education is critical in ensuring that when the news comes out, you know where to go. You know where your shelters are. You understand? And I think that moving forward, I would really like to push an education aspect of it. It's not just, okay, this access is coming, let's run to near a shelter. You understand? What steps that you have to take? Williams pointed out that there is still debris around to the town eight months after Hurricane Maria, which the committee has planned to address soon. And one of the things that we're trying to do is to get these things removed as soon as possible because these things are still fine projectiles that can damage homes and property. You understand? as well as individuals. So what we're trying to do right now is try to get these things out of the way. You understand? So hopefully the next coming month, uh, weeks rather, we'll be having a cleanup campaign where we want to clean up the entire town. We want to involve everybody, not just the disaster committee, just not just the town council, not just the office of the power rep, but everybody, civil society, different groups, to uh, come and have a, a big cleanup. And over $70,000 worth of building materials uh, procured for destitute elderly on the island. Owner of Premium Home and Residential Healthcare Services, Fax, said the donation from a Group Solidaire in Martinique will be useful to the elderly who want to rebuild but have no other means to do so. And I'm delighted to say that they were able to raise in excess of 23,000 euros to enable them to purchase materials that you see around you, perhaps behind me, on the side of me, all roofing materials. But they went further than that. They were not satisfied with just raising funds. Companies in Martinique, uh, Biometal, Acrylometal, and in particular a company called Cotrel, donated tons of materials, wood and galvanage, in addition to what was purchased from the funds that were raised. We do have builders coming in from Martinique who are going to help recover some of the homes. But in addition, we have one lucky recipient whose home is going to be built from scratch. Group Solidaire was also instrumental in bringing in food, medicine and other items for fax shortly after the hurricane. I'm very happy. I'm very glad to, to be here. For me, it's the occasion to concretize it, that is to put it in form. It's the idea that nous tenir et puis Marie Thérèse et puis euh, madame Grégoire et puis nous tous ici là que nous tenir dit après hurricane après cyclone que nous t'ai fait en, en sorte de collaboration et puis Fox et puis la Dominique disons que nous commençons assez bien nous commençons depuis après hurricane nanté là donc je dis à nous nous nou là pour enfin pas moi hein m'en ca représenter un groupe de comme Marie Thérèse dit à l'air mon jeune cœur dit à l'air C'est un groupe très important de monde qui a participé à l'opération Tala. Lifeline Ministries played an integral role in helping FACS obtain the material from Group Solidaire in Martinique. And we recognize that the elderly in Dominica particularly have, um, they make up a large proportion of the population and they've not had a good deal. Okay, uh, I noticed that in Barbados they've just established a ministry for the elderly. So you never know, maybe we'll follow suit. But I would like to see um, a greater emphasis on helping those people whose relatives are far away or maybe have forgotten about them altogether. The road network in the Layou Valley is set to get some serious attention this year. Deputy Prime Minister Reginald Ostry says plans were afoot to develop roads in that area. However, Hurricane Maria has sent authorities back to the drawing board with the initial designs. There has always been a project, in fact we have the designs, and we had the designs even before Maria for the roads between the Lyo Bridge and this bridge. But because of the hurricane we have to review those designs, um, to, because of the damage caused by Maria, we now to, need to revisit the design and to make sure it can withstand um, another test. 
So we may have to look at moving the, the road further away from the, uh, from the river and stuff like that. We also are in the process of doing the designs from here, going back towards Ponkase. That is being done and very short that will come. Because the intention of the government is to have that road built from the Lyle Bridge up to the Ponkase. Um, I'm, I'm wrong about. But plans of that are well in advance. I know from this leg going back towards Lyle, um, this is already done. Just reviewing it. And uh, we have a company on Ireland who is going to be doing the York Valley Bridge Junction to uh, um, Pocasse. Minister for Public Works Dr. John Colin McIntyre says he intends on improving the road network in the Lyu Valley using lessons learned from Hurricane Maria and other effects of climate change. The Lyu River has really taught us what's happening in terms of what you call hydrodynamics. And it has taken course and it has remodeled its own path, it has washed away roads over a period of a couple of years. But I think now we have an ideal opportunity to look at the present designs that are there in place. And I must say, as the new minister, I'm definitely seeing changes I'm going to make to these designs, not as an engineer, but in terms of the vision of the government and in terms of resilience. Just where we stand looking ahead there, there's no reason why I want to take this road back to this river. I'm going to, I'm going to enforce the fact that we're going to move along the, um, the inland aspect of roads heading away from rivers, the cost of oils are tremendous and you can't even control water sometimes in terms of coming from the mountains being drained from one Trapito area and the undermining of the, the walls that you may build. So I am not going to build anything right now in my lifetime that is subject to the, um, the evils if you want to go, you want only the blessings of the rivers in Dominica. The acting local government commissioner has described an initiative by the Monjon River Sirig Village Council to formulate a three-year development plan for that community as timely and bold. The council joined forces with various stakeholders this week to formulate a three-year development plan to guide its projects, activities and programs. Wednesday's planning meeting brought together representatives of the police, welfare division, youth division, Yes We Care program, school and agriculture. The formulation of a broad-based plan for the development of the community was undertaken as part of local government month activities. I want, as we plan this afternoon, to focus essentially on making Riviere Siric Monjon a more climate-resilient community. I mean, of course, the thrust is resilience. And resilience doesn't necessarily mean just um, the hurricane, because oftentimes people think of the resilience. Since we're talking of resilience, the first thing that comes to people's mind is just hurricane. You have to be financially resilient. You have to become resilient individuals. And of course, by extension, we can become resilient community because we don't do that to the whims of fancies of just being resilient. There's a specific purpose why we have got to be resilient because times have changed. Um, Maria has taught us a very important lesson a lesson that the thing we hear about climate change is true. It's real. And that lesson has taught us, it has forced us now to have a different mindset, a different thinking. I'm pretty certain if something were to happen, God forbids, for the 2018 season, our people will be more mindful and more careful of the actions that they, they took then in 2017 as opposed to 2018. So we have to begin to think of that mindset. During Local Government Month, there was specific focus on a theme which promoted the concept of resilience. We looked at the whole question of building community resilience through local government. And we know that it's possible because essentially the council is supposed to serve as an organization which seeks to govern the affairs of the communities or the village district as we call it. So I'm really hoping that as we go through this planning process, we will keep bear in mind all of the vulnerabilities within Monjon River Siric and seek to see how best we can use the available resources first. We have to think of, of available resources because in the event of any adverse event, we are the first responders. The people in Monjon River Siric are the first people to respond to any adverse event. So importantly, we have to begin to think of what resources are available within the community we, are also, we also have to be mindful of what resources are available probably within the southeastern district and to, uh, to some extent and rather lesser extent what are the resources available from outside the community and outside the district. Tusa encouraged the council to go beyond the development plan and to test and review it from time to time. He advised that the plan must be presented to the wider community of Monjon and Rivia Sirik.
You are watching Channel 5 News. We will continue right after this. M&J Covering is the producer of designed galvanized and galvalume in Dominica. They design to your specifications, color and length, four styles of galvanized and galvalume pre-painted roofing sheets as requested and supply all your galvalume accessories. M&J Covering helps you control spending and reduce waste. At m j Covering, they are also equipped to build your roof to precise standards anywhere on island. So come to m j Covering at One Mile in Portsmouth or call 445-5001-275-5003 today. Lani Sing Tupatu, attention si vous êtes nom et bien fan. Visitez Place Santé pour examiner le corps. Ça, c'est un nid pour vous voir si vous avez des qui ont des maladies TB et des maladies sexuelles. En compagnie de gens qui ont des maladies HIV, des TB aussi. Sauf que vous avez des guérisons pour TB. Vous savez vivre en bonne santé même si vous avez des maladies HIV. Parlez avec le docteur. Prenez la responsabilité. Aidez de bout de ces maladies TB et HIV. Ou agissez tout le monde pour examiner le corps. Thank you for staying with us. Dominica will be entering the 2018 hurricane season a bit handicapped thanks to last year's Hurricane Maria. According to consultant at the Office of Disaster Management, Cecil Schillingford, some areas of the country are in recovery mode while others are still in response mode. He pointed to the level of restoration at affected emergency shelters and houses, which has been a slow process. There are lots of challenges right now in that um, there's still a lot of houses that are uncovered and still on the tarpaulins. We have a challenge of, of, of shelters in that we are going into a new hurricane season and um, a lot of our shelters were compromised as a result of um, Hurricane Maria and um, a lot of them have not yet been um, reconstructed or re-roofed or, or fixed, fixed up um, again because of the shortage of, of material. Um, so we are really going into this new hurricane season sort of um, handicapped in certain areas and I'm very much concerned about the shelter situation. The area of secure shelters remains a top concern, especially as some communities are now without shelters due to last year's hurricane and as the predictions for this hurricane season do not look good for the region. We are um, feverishly trying to uh, put things in place to ensure that people are, are, are safely housed if we should um, be faced with another uh, hurricane situation, God forbid. Um, we are told that um, we could have 14 to 16 named storms, which already puts us at over average, above average. Um, of which seven could be hurricanes and three could be major hurricanes. Of course, the scientists cannot predict landfall, so um, there's no way of knowing where these hurricanes are going. And we're just hoping that they stay out at sea because um, we cannot take another hurricane one and we wouldn't wish it on anybody else. While those currently in shelters can remain should another weather system approach, it would pose the problem of finding alternative shelters for others who need to seek refuge from a storm. However, government is working anxiously to identify new buildings to serve as shelters. And if it means that we have to um, use private dwelling houses and if it means that we have to pay um, a small fee um, for the use, um, we, I'm sure we will do that. Uh, one of the other things we would maybe want to recommend is the sort of neighborly approach to sheltering. This year it's going to be a strange year for us because still trying to get organized after a hurricane and going into another hurricane season is, is not the norm. And the Minister for Tourism and Culture has reiterated government's commitment to the arts. The Honourable Robert Tong told the closing ceremony of the Dominica Institute for the Arts on Thursday, government remained fully committed to supporting the arts and culture. We recognize the power of arts to heal, to dissipate vagrancy, to reduce crime and to elevate and inspire. We are also conscious of the importance of culture and arts to the economy. 
Now that tourism and culture are happily married, we ratify the Institute's work, which is critical to the health of our nation. As a government, we appeal to our leaders in the educational institutions, mm -hmm. the industry, and business to invest in the arts and culture to enhance the opportunities for the development of culture and for arts in our country. We thank all the stakeholders and, and our audience here this, this evening for your firm commitment to the arts as evidenced by your presence here this afternoon. I'm sure there are many other things that you could be doing right now. I want to say special thanks to the Peace Corps for partnering with us and playing a prominent role in developing our arts through development of our, our arts. Best wishes to the Institute in all of your future endeavors. And again, I also want to say thank you to all of the organizers because after such a huge challenge of um, Hurricane Maria, putting this together obviously was uh, an amazing and task. Meantime, Chief Cultural Officer Raymond Lawrence addressing the end of year closing concert, showcasing the work of the DIFA students, said Hurricane Maria did have a negative impact on the Institute. Lawrence says the art studio was badly damaged by Hurricane Maria and that affected training programs and performances. He says half of the dance studio's roof was also damaged. While some students were lost due to migration after the hurricane, classes resumed in January. 82 students in total participated in the training program for this semester. The students were trained in 11 different courses, and these are art, wood carving, music theory, children's choir, drum kit, functional guitar, keyboard, steel pan, ballet, contemporary dance, and freestyle dance. We had offered um, another 10 courses, visual arts, sculpture, costume building, photography, flute, music business, songwriting, acting for theater and film, introduction to film and arts and events management. Um, but we went ahead with the classes that had five or more students. But know that in the future, these are some of the courses that we'll be offering here in case you want your children to continue to um, their training programs here at DIFA. And remember to adults are also very, very welcome. Lauren says the Institute tried to achieve in four months what it would take seven months to do. As Chief Cultural Officer, I was very keen on us getting back as soon as possible after the hurricane because I always feel that arts and culture have a role to play in helping to rebuild and to re you know, help the country to rebound as well, apart from all the other efforts. Um, and, but so we were not able to do our usual training of trainers this year, but we are hoping that next year we will be able to do the training of trainers. We did do our outreach programs, DIFA did outreach programs, and also the Cultural Division did several outreach programs across the island as well. Some of the schools and communities um, include the Massac Primary, the Caleb Laura Primary, St. Luke's Primary, St. John's, the Maho Primary, the Newtown Primary, the Wills Strathmore Stevens Primary School, the Casabru Secondary, ITSS, PSS, the Grand Bay Primary, and the Goodwill Secondary School. And we have also been conducting training classes as well in various communities in Dominica. In fact, um, some of the programs we have also offered uh, Jinping and theater and art and wood carving and steel pan drumming as well across the island. Parents are encouraged to register their children in the DIFA program during the summertime at the Old Mill Cultural Center. And now, just in case you missed the DIFA closing concert, here are some brief highlights of just a few performances.
And finally, some interesting takeaways from a poll conducted by Alex Bruno. While the poll results suggest that 82% of respondents would welcome regime change, a certain percentage of these respondents say they don't see any viable alternatives at this time. This is not the kind of information that certain individuals expected, and Bruno says some have le let him know they are not happy with his findings. Most people who answered that to that question also said that, but there is something else, um, and did not readily say that they would vote for an option. So there were, there, there's an, a 38% people who are floating out there who are saying, I'm not even sure because for whatever reason, they, they do not think that um, the alternatives are, are readily available for the change. So yes, there is this wind, there is this idea, there is this reaction to a possible change, um, but parties have to work. That's what the people are saying. Well, that's what I got from them. Um, and the, the, so the incumbent party should get serious about working, and the opposition parties also should get serious about working. That is what I found from the people. Um, so um, I, I, I understand now that there are some sectors who are not very happy with those results, but they should, do not have to be happy. The fact is that is what it is. And until such time that you find otherwise, I think you should work. Poll results depend on a number of factors. One of them is how the questions are structured to the respondents. And no two poll is alike. The designs are different. So somebody else might go with a design for someone who commissioned it to and ask a different question and get the results that they ask for. I wanted to know what the people felt about regime change, about the performance of the government, about the opposition about the relief supplies and stuff like that, and I got what the people gave me. So I do not know what the other poll, and there are polls taking place now as we speak. So somebody might be sitting in that same chair here and say, oh, the last poll, this and that, and this poll say, no, I'm not into that. I'm not into destroying people's work. I'm into presenting my work, and I'm into defending my work. Members of the public who are interested often want to know who is funding a given poll in an attempt to determine the motivation behind it. Bruno says this recent poll and future ones will be done under an organization called Caribbean Agency for Political Advancement, CAPA. That is the new organization that will be bearing the work that I do. Not yet fully registered, again for complete disclosure, but the name is available and this will be the name that the polls will go under moving forward. Um, so we spend some time to come up with a really interesting name and that's what's going to be. So the next time will be speaking, it, it will be me doing the work, but on the kappa. Do people have any concerns about who pays for poll? Yes, who, uh, and, uh, of course they what, do. What sort of info, you know? They do, but I, I have to protect the people who, who was commissioned the polls. And there are, I can tell you that there are people with deep pockets and great interests in the electoral business in Dominica. I cannot tell you that I got a million dollars to do the poll. I wish I did. Um, but I, the people who coughed up the money and commissioned this work I would rather remain anonymous at this time. But I can tell you they are legit people with interests and um, people who are looking at the, the, the best interests at heart, the future of Dominica. Where should I do what? And polls are done in every society, every time. It's, I mean, there have been two polls before this one. There's one being done right now. I mean, everybody poll. Um, so it's done. And the, my reason for reaching out to the public is to thank the public for at least taking us seriously and giving us their opinion. Because without the people's opinion, your work is useless. Reflecting on recent elections in Barbados, Bruno believes the only advantage the Barbados electorate has over Dominicans is their access to information. The Dominican electorate is as savvy as the Bajan electorate. There are people who think that the Barbados, the Barbados people are more exquisite than us, to an extent because they are exposed to a little more academic amenities and the, the structure of the media in Barbados is more robust than that of Dominica. The people, the media practitioners in Barbados go after the big stories and they demand questions and responses from the politicians. In Dominica, I don't think we quite do that. But that does not make the electorate in Dominica less affluent than that of Barbados. In fact, we belong to the same economic space, to the same Caribbean basin, and we all think similarly. And if Dominicans had more access to information 
as the Bajans did. And if the professionals like me were better respected and not being branded blue, red, green, purple, pink, I think Dominique uh, would behave similarly as the Bajans did. I mean, we have not changed a government in almost 20 years in Dominica. The Bajans have changed at least twice in 20 years. That's the third time in 20 years. So what does that say? Does that say that they are more affluent than us? Probably. But probably it says that the Bajans are a little more open and they are a little more um, tolerable and they tolerate professionalism a little, a little more. And the structures that are set up are more um, media structure and other I mean, systematic structures favor change, favor continuance, favor continuance. In Dominica, I do not think our systems are quite set up that way as yet. And that, I think, is the difference between Dominica and Barbados. To end the news, we take a look again at the headlines. Seniors in Martinique provide housing assistance for their Dominican counterparts affected by Hurricane Maria. The impact of Hurricane Maria on hurricane shelters lingers as Dominica marks the start of a new hurricane season. And the Minister for Culture renews government's commitment to the arts. Feel free to contact us at news at marpin2k4.com. You can access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Do have a great weekend.